everyone welcome to my ebony tower my name is Gloria and on this channel I just like to share simple meal prep recipes with you all that I find on Pinterest um, online in my recipe magazines better homes and garden or just what friends tell me they're cooking I know all week we're texting calling our friends family at least in my world we're always like what are you cooking what it's on your menu this week what are you prepping for dinner what you have for breakfast so I'm hoping this channel is a place for people to go to get some meal inspiration I'm just a home cook I'm not a master chef I don't claim to be I just enjoy cooking and searching for recipes so today what I'm making are mealy short ribs I have some beef short ribs here they used to have a cooking show called down home with the Neely's on Food Network it was a really great show I'm gonna pair these uh, ribs with some grits with Parmesan cheese it's gonna be delicious I actually use the Neely's recipe um, for the grits that they use for their shrimp and grits recipe I will link them down below I found them on Pinterest I'm also making something called sweet potato chicken poppers so that could be like our lunch for this week so I have some ground chicken here and some green onions um, I believe oh and sweet potatoes go with those sweet potato chicken poppers um, these are just diced tomatoes and tomato puree for the ribs and some red wine for the ribs and for me to sip on while I'm cooking <laughs> and the beef rib recipe does call for zest of an orange I think we might use some of the juice from the orange onion bay leaf and of course our seasonings and for our dessert this week, I'm making something called two ingredient apple pie cups, also found on Pinterest. So you just use the cinnamon rolls by Pillsbury and apple pie filling. And we're gonna put that in uh, mini muffin tins and bake it. Sounds good to me. So stick around if you want to see what I'm cooking. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started with the mealy short rib recipe. We have our onion. We're going to chop up that, some celery. The recipe calls for thyme. I don't have fresh thyme. I'm just going to use this. It also calls for one large carrot. I'm going to use some carrot chips that I have. Cooking is great. You can improvise with what you got. We have our orange. The recipe calls for the zest of one orange. Um, I'm going to probably squeeze some of this orange juice on my ribs. We have our broth, beef broth. I'm using Lari seasoning salt and pepper because we need to put that on the meat before we braise it and get a nice crisp uh, coating on there. I have two bay leaves. Excuse my hands. They're ashy. I'll be washing my hands all the time uh, Calls for garlic. I'm just using my little minced garlic in a jar here And I think that's all the recipes it call it calls for red wine dry red wine I'm gonna use that bottle. I showed you earlier and that's it So we're gonna chop up our celery and our orange We're going to season our ribs both sides with salt and pepper I'm using seasoning salt and I have two tablespoons of olive oil warming up in my pan over here and we're just going to do this in batches so that everything browns nice and even all 
right, let's brown our meat. Oh yeah. Can that sizzle? I think I'll do two at a time. This recipe does say cook in a Dutch oven. Um, I don't have that, I just have this pot. And that'll do, good enough. So we're just gonna let these brown on both sides and we're gonna work in batches and get these out when they're ready and put some more in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these. They've been browning. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. I don't want to get hot. That's what you want. Okay. All right, I'm going to put the last three ribs into brown. And next we'll saute the celery, carrot, onion, garlic. Nice, so good. All right, so I added my carrots, celery, and onion mixture to the pan, to the pot. Now we're just gonna saute that. We're gonna add some more seasoning. Remember, we season in layers. So we wanna season these vegetables with seasoning salt and pepper or just salt and pepper. So we're gonna let these hang out and soften. My pan was getting hot, so I did put a little bit of beef broth because everything was starting to stick. So we're gonna saute that up. Add our tomato puree, tomato paste, wine, and we'll add the meat back in. So the meat is over here resting. I'm going to just squeeze some of that orange juice on top. It doesn't call for that in the recipe, but I thought that'd be kind of delicious. Why not? Oh, we're gonna add the garlic too. Okay, our vegetables have been cooking. Now we're gonna add three cups of stock. The recipe says vegetable stock. I'm gonna go ahead and use beef stock. Or I might use beef and chicken. I don't know if I have three cups worth of chicken stock. We will see. Here's one. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. I've never tried this recipe before. It's my first time. Two. And I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be one of my faves. All right, here comes the third cup of beef broth. We had enough. We're gonna have, add two tablespoon, two cups of red dry wine. I'm just gonna put one cup of Cabernet Sauvignon. Remember, we can improvise, right? Ooh, so pretty. It's gonna give this such a pretty color. One tablespoon of tomato paste going in. Okay. Next, we're going to add one can of diced tomatoes. Yummy. And then tomato puree. Now the recipe did say to get diced tomatoes in a thick puree. I didn't see that at the store, so I just got some of this tomato puree and I'm just gonna add all of it. We're getting our lycopene in, y'all. Stir that all up. Ooh, that looks so good, okay. Next, I believe we add our bay leaf. The recipe calls for one, I'm putting two. Always make sure 
you count how many bay leaves you put in a dish because you definitely don't want to eat that. All right, so I've added thyme. Remember the recipe does call for thyme sprigs. I don't have that. So I just put in like a tablespoon or two of um, my ground thyme. I put in the lemon zest. Now we're going to, mm, taste of that, it's good. I'm just going to add our meat back into the delicious sauce. Then we're going to simmer this for three hours. Now the recipe calls to put it in the oven, like in a Dutch oven. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to cook it slow and low, stove top. So we're putting the meat back in. We're gonna put a lid on her and enjoy the aroma wafting through the halls of this home. So good. Oh my God, oh my God. Get in there, swim, swim, soak up all the flavor. The recipe said to put them juices from the plate dish back up in the sauce. And lastly, it's not in the recipe, but I'm gonna add some more orange juice to the mix. Give that a mixy mixy. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, see y'all soon. I said it before and I will say it again. I wish you all could smell the deliciousness. Oh my God. This has been cooking for maybe two hours now. And look, the meat is just tender, falling off the bone. Look at that color. Fantastic. All right, next we're gonna get with these grits. We have one cup of grits, a half a cup of whipping cream, four cups of chicken stock, some butter and Parmesan cheese, delicious. We're going to bring this chicken stock up to a simmer with the uh, whipping cream. And then we're gonna add salt, pepper, I'm gonna add Slap Ya Mama seasoning, Creole seasoning, parsley, pepper, our ribs, are doing very well. I'm thinking in another hour they should be ready to go. So we're gonna add this cup of stock. So we have four cups of chicken stock. And then we're gonna add the half a cup of whipping cream. Beautiful. And we don't want a hard boil, we just want a simmer, and then we will whisk in our grits, um, our seasonings, let the grits cook, add some butter, and our seasonings here. Delicious. All right, our chicken stock and whipping cream is boiling, so I'm going to add some of the grits and whisk with my little mini whisk here. Just to get some of it incorporated. Now once all the grits are in, you do want to turn this to low. And stir often. I love grits. I haven't had grits in quite some time, so this is like a special treat. 
feels like Sunday supper. So we're going to add some of this Slap Ya Mama. I think the recipe calls for like a tablespoon. Remember we're using chicken stock, so you don't want it to be too sweet. Some pepper, I mean too salty. Some pepper and just parsley flakes. Parsley flakes are really high in iron. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but every chance that I get I like to add it to my dishes. So I'm putting that on low. So we're just going to let the grits thicken and then we'll add Parmesan cheese, yummy, and butter. These grits are thickening. We want to cook them slow and low. I hate when grits or oatmeal start popping everywhere. I have my temperature on medium low, stirring occasionally. Next, we're going to add butter and Parmesan cheese once these thicken up some more. All right, our grits are nice and getting thick. We're gonna add some butter. I'm thinking maybe two and a half pats of butter. And we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese, shredded Parmesan. And that's going to thicken it some more. The recipe calls for one-fourth cup. I'm putting like half of that five-ounce container. Why? Because I like cheese. And we're just going to mix that all around and let this thicken up a little bit more. And then taste it to see if we need any more seasonings. Yum. Oh. And we're done. The grits came out so good. I'm going to put that on a plate. Oh boy. These ribs. I can't even find them. They done came all off the bone. We're just gonna ladle it right on the grits, like so. Let's get some more meat. You guys have got, look at that. Oh, you guys have got to try this. So good. Next up, we're making sweet potato chicken poppers. This recipe sounded so good to me. We have some ground chicken, and we're going to mix in two cups shredded sweet potatoes, green onions. The recipe says you can use coconut flour or almond flour, which is what I'm going to use. We need extra virgin olive oil to mix into the batter here, the mix. And then I'm going to spray my pan with olive oil. These are going to be cooked in the oven. We have parsley flakes, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, some Lowry seasoning salt, or you can use regular salt, and smoked paprika, which you don't have to add, or you can use chili powder or regular um, paprika. So I'm excited to try these. This will be our lunch for this week. I'm thinking of pairing this with a nice salad, and the recipe does have a dip you can make to go with this. 
but I'm probably not going to make that and hopefully my daughter will try them. All right, let's get started. All right, I have my sweet potato here and I'm going to cut it and then use my grater here to shred it or grate it. Let's get into it. We have our chicken, our grated sweet potatoes. That one sweet potato made about two cups. And in here, we're just going to mix everything. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of olive oil. You can use coconut oil. I'll put a little bit more. And you want to use a nice big bowl for this. We need one tablespoon of garlic powder. This already smells good. One tablespoon of onion powder. I'm so excited to try this. One teaspoon of paprika. I'm using smoked paprika. You want some salt. I'm using seasoning salt. I'm adding parsley. I add parsley to everything. And pepper. About one teaspoon. Okay, also to this mix, we're going to add the green onions and some sort of flour. They use coconut flour. That's my oven. I'm using some almond flour that I have. And we're doing two tablespoons of that. One, two. And we have some sprigs of green onion, two to three sprigs, or more if you like, or less if you like. Yes, I just love cooking. Making these videos are so fun for me. It's like my side hustle. I do work 12 hour shifts overnight in a hospital, so I do need to meal prep because the last thing I have time to do is cook on the nights that I go to work. It's just so much easier to have food prepped, ready to go, to take and warm up at work, to leave for the kid, for my mom to eat when she's over. At my house, we're gonna mix all of this together. It smells so good. And we're going to make little balls, little poppers, and bake them in a 400 degree, 400 degree oven for about 25 to 28 minutes, flipping them halfway through. So easy, so delicious. I'm going to add a little bit more salt, just because... I'm gonna make sure it's seasoned. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pair this with a nice salad. That sounds so good to me with some guacamole. Like I said, the recipe does call for a sauce that you can use to make with this. Ranch would be good, ketchup. All right, so we're just gonna finish incorporating these ingredients, put them on the baking sheet and bake them. Delicious. All right, I have these, they're really cute. They're like pre-cut parchment papers. Love that, so much easier. Always spray your pan first. That's gonna make the parchment paper stick so much easier. It's almost like a glue. And then we're also going to spray the top 
with olive oil or you can just rub oil of your choice on. We have our chicken and sweet potato mixture. These are poppers, so we want about, we're gonna form little balls and then flatten, the recipe says flatten them a little bit. And it should make about 20 to 25, but I might make mine just a little bit bigger. These smell so good. And we're gonna bake these 25 to 28 minutes, I think I said that. Turning them halfway through so each side crisps up. I do believe the recipe said you could put these under your boiler if you want extra crispiness, I am not going to do that because every time I use my broiler, y'all, I end up burning something. I hope you guys try these recipes. I mean, they're so easy. I get so tired of cooking the same thing all the time. Really, my goal is I'm hoping my daughter, she's nine, will try these. I feel like they're up her alley. I feel like they are definitely kid friendly. Maybe good for parties, a good appetizer. We'll see, I had never tasted them, so I'll let you guys know what we think. I might end up using another pan, sheet, baking sheet. Could probably make these smaller but I'm not all right we are going to pop these in the oven 400 degrees 25 to 28 minutes flipping halfway through until they're nice and crispy and cooked through all right our sweet potato chicken poppers are done it took more than 25 to 28 minutes I flipped them maybe two to three times um, I would probably not use the parchment paper next time just so they can crisp up, but they are very juicy and very delicious and I'm very excited. I think you guys must try this recipe. It's easy, portable, delicious. Now I am going to, to get a napkin. I'm going to pair these with my salad. I like to put everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's on my salads and a little bit of 21 seasoning salute. You see that? These are such a great combo on a salad. I made a little bit of avocado with a little bit of cilantro, lemon pepper. And I'm going to put that right here on the side. And this is how I'm going to eat my sweet potato and chicken poppers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And lastly, I'm at a little great value, a ranch from Walmart and get my grub on, delicious. So I really hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you try these recipes. They're so quick, so easy. Just a little something different for this week. Uh, please like, subscribe, come back. I need some subscribers. I have three, I'm very excited about that. But I would love to have more and please post down below, comment down below if you try any of these recipes or if you have any suggestions on how I made them. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Apple pie cups. How adorbies. So you can either drizzle or get you some whipped cream. Oh yeah, so cute.